Welcome to Break Into Tech Show with Professor Temi Akinwumi of My IT University, a multi-award winning tech CEO, career coach, and mentor with decades of hands-on tech career will ensure your career dreams come true. Join our extraordinary show today on groundbreaking topic for a successful career. Do you want a $100,000 job as a cybersecurity professional, scrum master, business analyst software QA, cloud architect, data analyst, technical recruiter, and more? Visit www.myituniversity.com to schedule a call. Come and get inspired to secure a lucrative job. Keep the job and grow on the job. Relax, receive, and see results. We're glad you're here. Share, like, and comment. Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining me from. I hope you are doing well today. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for having me. My name is Professor Temi Akinwumi, and uh, we're going to have a wonderful day today. Um, we're going to be discussing about PCI DSS, which is a framework in cybersecurity. I know many of you are trying to break into tech, and you've done everything you can, but you can't break in. And plus, you don't even know what to do. You are confused. I'm here for you. I'm going to be showing you different series and we've been doing that for for a year some years now here on this uh platform but i'm going to continue to do that because my major goal is to make sure that you can get the job break into this tech that you've been dreaming for of break into this tech keep the job and become a leader in tech that is my mission that is my goal and i'm grateful that we are bringing this to pass so uh, sit on tight, get your pen and notepad ready because we're going to be having a wonderful time. It's, the major thing is to break into tech. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It doesn't have to be difficult. It can be fun. And that's what I am all about, making it fun, making it real, and making the money for you. So you can make the money and have a good life. So thank you so much, everybody. I want to welcome you. If you are just joining me for the first time, if you just saw me, just flash past and you're just like, what is this? Yeah, I'm here. So let me welcome you. Uh, if you can do that for me, please quickly, let's do that. Introduce yourself, um, your name, and where you're joining from. I would love to welcome you. Thank you so much. We're all over the world. Right now, I can see some of my engineers from Germany, from UK, all there already. Carl, hey, Professor Timmy, doing great. Thank you. I hope you too. Yes, I'm doing well. Carl, thank you so much from Germany. And I see Mumuni from UK joining us live. Thank you, Mumuni. Good morning, Prof. Temi. I hope you guys are doing great. These are my engineers. Thank you so much, Demos from Orlando. Thank you, Demos D. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm so happy that you're able to join us. Let's share this, share, share, share on your social media platform. One of the major things that you need for tech is passion. And this passion, these two guys that I just introduced, they have this passion case close. If you're looking for passionate tech people, this is people you want to see. They, even though they're in two parts of the world, that the time zone is so different, but they are so passionate. If you don't have passion for tech, just don't waste your time because it's a waste of time. But if you have passion for tech, let's do it. That is it. I'm very passionate about tech. Tech is beautiful. Tech is lovely. Tech is wonderful. But at least do yourself the favor to have passion for it but then you will enjoy it very well. So <laughs> thank you so much. And I have Tasha also joining us. Let's see, Tasha is joining us. Thank you, Tasha, for being here with us today. Thank you so much for your time. We have Fatima also joining us. Thank you, Fatima, for being here. So we have Tasha, thank you. We have Fatima, thank you. Fatima joining from Dallas, Texas. Tasha joining from Orlando, Florida. We have Mumani. Doing great, blessed to be here. Very good, thank you so much. Eddie also is in love from uh, Maryland. Hi, Eddie, hope you are doing well today. Eddie is one of our engineers as well. Uh, Stoner Alpha from Virginia, thank you, Stoner. Thank you so very much. And we have Sharon joining us from Brooklyn, New York. Beautiful, thank you so much. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Let's share, share, share on our 
on all of our platforms, wherever you're joining from, if it's Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, anywhere, please share so that others can see us. I've been in tech for three decades and I've been mentoring now for 17 years, going to 18 this year. I'm always super excited about tech and I always want to give back because we're changing the life, people's life one person at a time. So it's a, it's a blessing to have that. So thank you so much, everybody. Today, we're going to be discussing about cyber security PCI DSS interview prep for 100K to 200K jobs. When I say 100K to 200K jobs, you might be thinking, how can that be? Oh, yes. <laughs> People are making that, okay? People are really making that, and I've seen that every single day. I pretty literally mentor people to break into these areas of tech. Thank you so much, Sharon from New York. So we're gonna be going through some interview prep today. And if there's a particular area that you want me to cover that you're looking forward to, feel free to leave that here so I can also um you know discuss that. Okay. So if you are if you are here, you're trying to break into tech and you don't know what to do, reach out to me. I'm gonna guide you. Okay, if you are just joining us, introduce yourself, your name, and where you're joining from so I can welcome you. That's what we're still doing. Okay, break into tech. Schedule a call with me, www.myituniversity.com, so that I can guide you. I spend my 30 minutes free discussing with you what you need to do so you don't make the mistake. That's why we do that, so that before you get started, we know exactly what we're doing. And, um, we have classes starting. We have some classes starting tonight, actually, today, for GRC and Security Plus. They will, this is these are weekday evening classes for some people that people that can't don't want to that are working on weekends. They don't have time for classes on weekend. They are free to join us, you know, for these weekday evening classes, seven to nine p.m. Wednesdays and Thursdays for GRC and Security Plus for eight weeks. Okay, but people that work on week, week, week evenings i want to do classes on weekend then also we share because we have classes for saturdays saturdays only you know classes we shall we're gonna help you to get you ready for that okay so reach out to me reach out to me if you try to join any of our classes like the one we're starting tonight for uh, security plus you know um and grc my number is going to be scrolling down here so you can text me i can see between that program because if you have to schedule a call it may not you know it may not be you may not be able to meet up because of the time you may not be able to have a slot for today but you can text me and i will help you to be in the class for tonight okay and also don't think you might think of tech i'm not doing i'm already in tech but look around you what about that your cousin what about that your son and your daughter that finished from college and they are only making 40k per uh, you know 40k per year they are not making any money they can't even buy anything you are they're still living with you you still have to feed them even though they went to college and they have all these thousands of dollars student loan why don't you let them break into tech they can still do those things they want to do by the side if they want to but you sent student children to college and they have all the student loan and they can't get a good job. That's there's a problem right there, isn't it? So let them reach out. This kid before they get frustrated and they start joining bad stuff, bad gang, bad stuff, just being frustrated. Because how can you finish college and be making 40k? And be making you know, you can't even make good money, right? You have to master, you can't make any money. What is that? Thank you. Thank you is a secret reach out it might be your for you for your cousin your nieces your nephew you can so look around you you know your mosque your church your temple anywhere people are suffering they don't know what to do some people are frustrated they are just cranky they are mad they are upset because of their life they have done everything they can on their part but they can't get a good job that is part of the problem people have a problem at home in their marriage husband don't have a good job wife don't have a good job they don't have time for the kids they're always working out the schedule you get better life in tech. You can both work from home, have your own home office, do whatever you want. The life you actually want to live, you can live it in tech. It doesn't have to, it's not rocket science. We just show you what to do. I will guide you into break into it. We have husband and wife, you know, siblings in the classes and they break in. So please, 
I don't know why I'm saying this, but somebody needs to hear it. That's why. Tell, tell somebody, let somebody tell somebody, please help our community. That can really save us, okay? And don't be uh, like, just sit at home, don't do nothing. Don't do that to yourself, okay? And um, and I actually want to also encourage you, especially this Black History Month. This Black History Month that is starting, I wish you all a wonderful Black History Month. Use this month to do something positive in your life, okay? We have a Black History Month promo that is going on. Reach out to me, okay? Make sure you reach out, <laughs> okay? And don't forget, we prep you for interviews. Interview preparation is key with us. So we have the treasure box. Um, we call it treasure box because it has a lot of treasure in there. It preps you for all sorts of questions. So I'm going to put this in the comment section. So if you click on this, it takes you to the, where the treasure box is. And you'll be able to, uh, and if you go to our website, as soon as you get to our website, www.myituniversity.com, when you get there, the first thing you will see right there is, is the trailer box. We have one for cybersecurity. We have one for agile. The cybersecurity one has so many frameworks, so many technical questions, interview, um, preps, you know, preps for all sorts of interviews. It asks the question to give you the answers. Imagine you already have all the answers for any interview questions. Anything that they can ever ask you, already prep them, package them in there. And it's a video format, and it also shows the question and shows the answer. So it's, it's a video format. It's really good. You can literally even sit down and write things down. It has things about technical, general questions, scenario-based behavior, okay? All sorts of questions about different frameworks, okay? Interview preps. It has things about uh, the steps of the interview, salary negotiation, resume, LinkedIn, everything is there. That's why I call it a trail box because it's a trail in the box. It's to go. Okay, so get your copy. It's on our website. Everybody should have that. Yeah, and you see, Mumuni is telling you here that the trail box is, you see, I want to read these comments. Trail box is a wonderful companion to have on your cyber security journey. See, it has its own copy. So make sure you get it. You will not regret having it. It's going to help you, it's going to change your. Uh, it's going to change your, the dynamics of your interviews. You will, it will change it because everything's like, it's like I'm prepping you one-on-one. -on -one. I pour my heart into that box and everything that you need to know about interviews is, is in there. And right now, actually, it's built into our pro curriculum now. Every student will have it when they come here. Everybody must have it. That's how good it is. Okay, and also another good news the reason why you have to join our program is that we have our own cloud platform where you can practice where you can practice what you learn in class. Where you can we have our own GRC platform where you can be on it for six months and just practice, practice, practice. You know, when you we finish training you, then we I come together with you and then we start learning, we start showing you things, actually show you GRC. It's a different thing to know the framework. Then can you actually practicalize the framework? Can you upload, download? Can you import? Can you add? Can you what can you do? Compliance? Do you know how to do how compliance is linked to internal control? How control is linked together? Do you know how to, to do different things like how doing an exception, how to create project? Do you know how to do all those things with your GRC too? No, you don't. So we invested on the on that. We bought an enterprise version which we have to pay for every year it's really expensive but we did and i sit with my students after they have finished training them then i sit with them every saturday and i teach them grc i teach them grc during mentorship we go over it you know and they know it so by the time they go out there they ask for 200k where they will pay them they have for 150k they will pay them because they know what they're saying so it's a our program is a community enriched program you know, so it's getting better. It's a lot of commitment on my part, but I'm all in, and everybody knows that. So we've been doing this for years and years, and we just all have to keep getting better, and that's what it is. It's fun. Join us. Reach out. You will never regret reaching out. I tell you that. Okay. So let's get started, guys. So if you as you are coming in, please share and also let me know where you're joining me from, so I can welcome you properly. Out of all the framework that we do offer, we have all this framework on our 
uh, platform. And even when we do the GRC, all these framework as well are also on there. All these different frameworks, we have them. You can upload all these templates for these frameworks. And we use them on our GRC tools and understand the, 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 temp, the, the, the process and the faces. And when I teach you, I teach you many frameworks so that when you go out there, you can work on any framework. And it's a community program. So if you, once you are with us, that's it. If you have a job, you come to mentorship. If you don't have, if you're looking for a job, you are in mentorship. So mentorship is a network where you meet the mentors, they come and present, and you know, you are looking, you present to me, and you ask questions. So I sit with you and you present to me and I give you correction. You can do it like this, do it like that. That's what we do every Saturday. It's a joy to give back. And that's what I'm doing. So join us. Don't go to a place where they promise you heaven and earth and you don't get even help. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even get nothing. Don't go to those places. I'm telling you now, because I see people going to those places and they come back and start crying. Or oh, I pay 10,000 or oh, I pay 12,000. I can't. Don't do that to yourself. You are here. You've seen evidences. You've seen it. You follow your instincts. <laughs> follow your instincts and stay here. Don't be running all over the streets and then you are stuck. Okay? So thank you so much, everybody. Let's get started now. LinkedIn user from Texas, welcome. And uh, Rita, thank you, Rita. How are you doing? Okay, so let's get started. It's fun, 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 isn't it? That's it. We're having fun today. It's a fun day. Every day is fun day with me. And uh, we make it happen. Okay, so let's break into tech. This year, DSS Cybersecurity Interview Prep for 100K to 200K jobs. Like I said, we are come to Apprentice for Tech and we're here to help you. These are some of our certification. I have one, my PhD, I mean, my PhD is in progress, almost done now, PhD in IT. I have my first degree in computer science. I have my bachelor's in software engineering and also another, I mean, I have a master in cybersecurity and also a master in software engineering. I've been doing tech all my life. I do everything in tech with my eyes closed. Okay, anything, cloud, cybersecurity, you know, project management, software coding, database, anything in tech. Okay, cybersecurity is the least. It's not hard. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. It's the least because if you are doing coding and scripting, you know how you know how far, right? <laughs> But this is the list, and I break it down so you can understand it. You know, break it down simple to understand, and so that once you know it, you are good. Okay, very good. So let's go. What is PCI DSS? People think, what is this PCI DSS? I just want to break into cybersecurity. Okay, there are many frameworks. PCI DSS being one of them, and it's being used by the credit card companies. So. If you're gonna work on a credit card project, you know, PCI DSS will be a framework that they will be following. Uh, so PCI DSS stands for Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards. So it is a set of security standards designed to ensure that all companies that accept, process, store, or transmit credit card information maintain a secure environment. So if they accept credit card, if they process the credit card, if you store it, if that's what you do, or you transmit it, you must follow this. It's a standard that you must follow, okay? And as you are having your question, please ask them. So why do we have to do this? What is PCI DSS for? PCI DSS was created to protect card order data from theft and fraud. Look around you. There's so many threat and theft and fraud. Some of you might can even attest to it that before you open your eyes, somebody is using your credit card somewhere. And you be like, I didn't buy this, I didn't do this. There's fraud, people taking your money, you know, and then you have to call your card company or your bank. Anybody can anybody attest to that? Can you attest to that? Tell talk to me. Have you seen that happen to you for real? I'm sure you have because I've seen it, right? So it applies to any organization, regardless of the size of number of trans or number of transactions that 
uh, accept credit card as payments. So all these credit card companies, they need you. They need you, they need you, they need you to come in and work with them and help them. Yeah, Tasha said yes. So I'm telling you, it's so rampant. It's not, especially after COVID, everything has gone online. Every people that used to go to the store before now, they already do everything online. People like me, I do everything on Amazon. <laughs> Even now, I'm feeling guilty, like, oh my Lord, I need to go to the real store because everything Amazon, like Amazon every time. Like, because we're so busy online, so we just go online, Amazon just order stuff. You don't even go to the real, real store, which even though I go to the store, but not as much, right? So we all use credit card. We all do things online. So we need to protect. So that's why they need us to help them. Okay? So it's one of the foremost, um, it's one of the foremost, um, you know, standard that needs to be, that need people. Right. So, what is the compliance process? And all these things are from, from the trial box. That's why you have to get a copy. Get your copy. Compliance with PCADSS is typically validated through a process that involves self assessment questionnaire. So, we learn about all those things. The self assessment questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, the, the, you know, external audits by qualified uh, security assessors. Okay, QSA and ongoing monitoring and reporting. So that's why they need you because they have to, have to always do this ongoing. They have to do the questionnaire. They have to do the self assessment. Some of them, yeah, you have to actually go there and assess them. You have to do pen testing, monitoring, and we have to do their vulnerability management. They need us. They need us. So, because when we talk about GRC, it's not only the compliance side. Like doing compliance, you might be doing pay, you know, helping them with testing their network, um, you know, and all of that. There's so much, right? Uh -huh. So, um, Mooney said that majority of the data breach involve uh, financial data, unfortunately, sold to the on the dark web. Yes, on the dark web, right? Yes, thank you so very much. That is it, right? So, and all these organizations must be in compliance. Think about Starbucks, Walmart, uh, all of them. They deal with credit card and they need people that will be in their PCIDSS side of, of things so that they can help them protect their infrastructure, protect their, their process. You know, remember that we, we, when we discuss about, about, about um, when we talk, talk about GRC or cybersecurity, we are looking at how do we protect the people, their process, and their technology. When you see that, it makes things people simple for you to understand. Non-compliance process. Non-compliance with PCIDSS can result in fines. They find this company. They find them. It increases transaction fees. Okay. Reputational damage. Imagine somebody say, oh, they broke into this company, or oh, they broke into that company, or they have data breach here. All that, you know what's gonna happen? The customer is gonna run away for some time, or no, they get scared, you know. So and so they don't want that. So you see all the CFO, all the director of IT, all they want is making sure that the network stay alive. It's online. Things are not down. Imagine you going to one, uh, going to uh, Amazon, and they said Amazon is down. Have you ever seen that before? You know how much they will lose airline airlines. Airlines, think of everywhere, healthcare, legal, legal office, everywhere need us. They all deal with transaction. Um, think about commerce, like all these uh, e-commerce um, websites. Think about all these um, uh, grocery stores. They need us, right? And potential losing the ability to process credit card transaction. These are what's going to happen to them when they are non-compliance. Okay, we will talk more about those things in our classes. So now let's get started with that question that's gonna prep you to get into these rules. As you are prepping for these rules, as you are prepping for it, you need to also understand what question they can ask you at interviews. So I'll prep questions for you that they can ask you during interviews for these rules as a PCI DSS, you know, 
um if, if the even sometimes the company might be doing you know some other framework but they can have PCIDSS too so they can mix it so what are the things they can ask you okay so we're gonna go over that so the first question is which of the following does PCIDSS primary aim to protect what are we aiming to protect with PCIDSS okay have your pen and notepad ready so we we see how much you're gonna get let's play that again that's why i said it doesn't have to be difficult it can be fun right and then you are learning so a personal personal health information b credit card c swiss credit number and d email address okay i see some people saying b now i only saw two why am i seeing only two people so that means you know it's already you don't want to be part of the gate. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Tasha say B. Mumuni say B. Faz. Faisa. Fes Adegite. B. Rita. V. B. I have four B. So let's see. And Sona also say B. Very good. Fatima. Okay. Very good. I'm getting all my techies saying B now. So let's go. Okay. B, right? You got it. Very good, thank you so much. Credit card focuses on protecting credit card data. Uh, PCIDS focuses on credit, credit card data during and after financial transaction. And Eddie also said B. Very good. So it's credit card. Excellent. Thank you so much. And if you are watching us later, you can also give me your answers. Play the game. Um, because you are playing the phone game and you're also learning. So put it in the chat. Even if you are watching after, still do it because you are. You are also doing it for to learn so feel free to put it and i'll comment i will always comment back okay number two what is the minimum requirement for password length according to pcidss you know we have learned this earlier i mean in, in our in our program we have discussed that but if you have not learned that before you are just seeing us feel free to learn one lady said process me you are you actually did surgery on my brain you know, looking through all your content. And she finally came to my program and met her. She got a job for 170. 170. Okay. So um A, six character, B, eight character, C, 10 character, and D, 12 character. So I see Eddie say D. Um, Sasha says D. I want to make sure I can get more input. I only saw two input. More input. Let's see. Only two people say D. What are you guys thinking? You see, what answer? Okay, Mark Wesley said B. Mumuni said D. And Fatima said D. Okay, I see a lot of Ds. Okay. Okay, so it's actually 10 characters. Even though if you do 12 characters, it's going to be strong, very strong, longer. But the minimum, the minimum password at least 10 character at least so i remember when i used to work for the government contract we always wanted to have a very long password setting characters long strong and all the things we have to put in it you know the longer the better i mean not too super long but any 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 password that is between 10 to like 15 i mean maybe 10 to like 14 is still good if it's too long you don't want to forget it right even though you have password uh, archive and storage now and all that, but God forbid they break into that, you know you are in soup. <laughs> so it's at least minimum of 10 characters, which is C. Okay. Very good, everybody. Thank you. So the next question, in which of the following situation is, is the use of the WEP, right? Con uh, encryption acceptable under PCA DSS? Under PCI DSS? always that's a never that's b c when no other encryption option is available and d when used in combination with another encryption method put your answer in the chat you know we have different types of encryption um you know this is one of them and if you remember your security, your security plus very well you remember what i said with this um web or WEP. You know what I said about it. Yeah, you know what I said about it, right? 
Uh -huh. You know, we have different ones. Okay, so let's go. And if you do, there's something here you don't know, write it down and do all your research afterwards because we are learning. This is a learning platform. So I see some people say B, some people say D. Um, we're looking at um, not question three now. Uh, we're looking at question three now. So is it a, uh, talking about web encryption accept, um, acceptable under the PCI DSS? I see B. Okay, I see Rita saying B, and I also see Tisha, Tisa, Tessa saying B. Only two people said B. Where are the other people? Where are my engineers? Can you put your answer in the chat? Somebody said, when no other encryption options are available. Rita, why are you going back and forth? <laughs> Rita is playing the game. Rita said B. Then Rita said C again. Wow, Rita, what is going on? <laughs> Rita is not sure. That's what it is. She's changing her mind. <laughs> Sonna said B. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. B, never. Don't use it. It's very weak. So PCIDS, PCIDSS prohibits the use of the WEP due to its vulnerability. Alternative conclusion methods should be used, not that. Not that. So there are so many other encryption methods. Go through your security plus. <laughs> yes, I'm not sure. It just said it's, it's not sure. But you, you pick the correct answer, then you change it. <laughs> okay. So never. Don't use it. There's so many other encryption algorithms that are out there, that are strong, that are better to use. Okay. So don't use this. We have the AES. We have so many other good ones, strong ones. Uh, we have the WPA3, the, the new version, so many other ones. Don't ever use this. Okay, so what now? Question four now. Thank you guys. Let's go to question four. What is the requirement for secure devel development practice according to PCI DSS? What is the requirement for secure development practices? Okay. I call it to PCIDSS. Okay, so let's see. A regular network scan. B code review. C email encryption. And D intrusion detection system. What is the requirement for secure development practices? I call it to PCIDSS. Put your answer in the chat. Is this one hard today? Is it hard? Is it hard? Talk to me. I need to see. I need to 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 see. You know, all these things are in the trial box too. So what I do, I teach you. I show. So in the trial box, I don't just give you questions. I go through the module. Like for the module for PCI, we have six videos, six short videos. One video will tell you this are what well, this is what we said SS means. Another one will tell you, uh, this is a requirement for PCI DSS. Another one will say these are the faces of PCI DSS. The another will start asking the question and give you the answer. Question, answer, question, answer. So when you go through each of the modules, we have PCI DSS there, we have NIST, RMF there, we have IPA, we have um ISO, we have third party vendors. So many things inside that variable. I cannot tell it all. I can't tell you enough. Okay. So we're looking at the answer now. I did it. You said B. Okay. That's the only one I've seen so far for this answer now. First, I did get a said, I did get a said, uh, A. Okay. What else? And um, Eddie Bo said A. And Prince One said B. B. Prince One, welcome. Ah, so okay. So where are we? There's a lot of uh, some people said B, but we have more Bs and we have we have uh, three Bs and two As. Where are my other engineers? Where are they? The answer is B. Code review. We're talking about developments, right? So PCI DSS, PCI DSS 
emphasizes secure code practicing. Secure code practices, including regular code review to identify and address potential security vulnerability. When I was a software engineer, we always do code review. So when we have code, we'll sit down and we'll review the code. Sometimes we have peer review. You are called your co-developer, they sit down and look at the code with you. Then we have some tools that we use also to review our code before we can even deploy it. Even the code runs or don't run, you still have to make sure that we do all the code review because some there's best practices. Some code you might build it and then you might even forget some variables that you might have some variables that you are not using. You are not that you have some instances you are not instantiating. You may have some variables that you that you are not setting in any value to and it's just there you have some input without your output all sort of things so code review is going to help us to see those things and then we have some session variables that when you finish you need to clear everything you need to abandon some things session you need to clear up that session you are not doing that you're leaving some things behind so when you do the code review we check all these things to make sure that we we clean those up and also you try and cache. So when you have errors, how do you cache those errors? Right? So you don't just leave an error that will make you vulnerable. So you cache all errors. If this do this, else do that, else do that, else. If none of this work, then cache it with this error. So it does, doesn't blow up and you have the green, you have the uh, the blue screen of death or same sort of thing that's going to be same thing that you don't want the hackers or people to know about the system giving too much information so all those things are what we see when you do code review so i'm, I'm teaching you software engineering now <laughs> you see i tell you i switch my brain everywhere because i've done everything in tech so it's like this 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 everything comes to play and that's why i'm saying there's nothing you have done in tech that's a waste if you've done Oracle before, somewhere you can get a job, fine. You keep it. You're going to use it. If you've done anything in networking, keep it. If you've done anything in Linux, keep it. It's not a waste. Just keep improving yourself. By the time you look back, you have become a giant in tech. We that we've spent all our years, all our lives in, 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 you know, in the academia, in institutions, training um, as a professor, and also being taught. Right now, I'm finishing my PhD in IT. It's not a waste of time. You will you will need it. Okay? You will need it. So it's not a waste. So I just want to encourage you. Okay? But this is your last bus stop because we're going to really train you and help you and mentor you. Okay? Very good. Question five. What does PCI DSS recommend for secure wireless transmissions? Secure wireless transmission. You see? We have the web encryption. You know, we've seen this before. I know you not make that mistake again. We have the SSL encryption. We have the TLS encryption. And no encryption is required. Can we put our answer in the chat? Put our answer in the chat, please. Can we put the answer in the chat? Okay. Um, I'm seeing B, SSL, uh, only one person. Mark Wesley, everybody's putting B. Cynthia, welcome. How are you doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we have Rita, B, 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 everybody's B, B. Okay, I'll see. So SSL and TLS, what's the difference between the two? So that's why you, you need to be updating your security plus. What's the difference between the two? So it's, it's C, it's TLS. You put in SSL, if you have been doing this maybe many years ago, you might be correct with SSL. But TLS has been updated to SSL. Um, so PCI DSS recommend the use of strong encryption protocol. The STLS is stronger than SSL. The SSL and uh, um, secure socket layer, you know. TLS is the recommendation now, no more SSL. Okay, such as TLS for secure wireless transmission. That's the most secure. 
TLS. Check it out. Well, if, for that, you need to come into class for your question. During interview, how can I explain risk to risk register and sub two? I meant real real workflow, please guide. Hey, <laughs> we can't do that here right now. We have how many minutes to go? If you need that, you need to come to class. Okay. And you say real workflow, you need to practically like that's why you can't really do what you, you can't give what you don't have. So that's the problem, right? And all this this uh, register, risk register is all that we do under our risk management in uh using our GRC tool. We have to show you in the tool, not here. Okay, so what am I saying is that schedule a call, the link is down here, and also the link is also shown near martinuniversity.com. Schedule a call and let's talk about that and um also get your trailer box and let's make it happen okay guys let's go number six how often should organizational conduct a risk assessment according to pcidss you're welcome cynthia how often should organization conduct risk assessment talk to me annually a b by annually c quarterly and d monthly How often do you um how often do you organize and conduct a risk assessment according to PCIDSS? Thank you, Yesu. Yes, Areba. Yes, Areba. Thank you for your comments. How often? So, okay. So how often should we conduct risk assessment? Thank you so much. Uh, yes, use Areba. Thank you. So we have C, Ade, Ade Deji said C, Eddie said A, Rita said C, <laughs> Cynthia said D, um, quarterly. Okay, that's C and A. Mm -hmm. Okay. The moment of truth, how often should organization conduct risk assessment according to PCIDSS? And first, I think B tested B. A, annually. Annually. PCIDSS require organization to perform a formal risk assessment at least. You know, because people there might be so busy, they've not done anything. But at least some people might be more than more than annually. But at least, at least a year. Even not talking about PCIDSS now, even in our own day-to-day -day at our jobs, for some, some of you that are GRC analysts, annual review, annual risk assessment. That's all that is required. If you've not done it in a year, then there's a problem. So you might do it more than that, but at least, at least it must be done. And after significant changes to the environment, if any significant changes, then you have to do it too, right? But at least if you have not done it in a year, then there's a problem. Are you getting it? At least annually. Okay. So what's the purpose of tokenization in the context of PCIDSS? What is tokenization? Why do we have to do that? Okay, number A, um, uh, letter A, A, the first thing, to replace sensitive data with non sensitive data. B, to encrypt data during transmission. C, to authenticate user. And D, to secure physical access to server. <laughs> okay, let's see. I said, I did you put A two times. I did it's like, I'm very sure it's A. So let me double die. <laughs> A, A. <laughs> he said A and A. I like that. Say A two times. And um, first, I did we tested C. I, um, 
let me see. <laughs> I think they actually give it three times. Like I'm super sure of this one. At least this one, I'm sure. It must be A. Okay, we are hearing you. Let's see what other you have to say. My people, my people, what else do you have to say? Is it A like um uh, I think they just said or C like um uh, fast I think it has said or Rita is going with uh fast I think it Rita says C. LinkedIn user said LinkedIn user, LinkedIn user, we don't know your name. <laughs> Link user says C as well. C is winning. I hope C don't get zero here. Because I don't know where all the C's are saying C now. And only one person said it. The A person said it three times. Let's see what we're doing here. I think the A guy knows what he's saying. The A guy said A, A, A. <laughs> okay, C. To replace sensitive data with non-sensitive data, you tokenize this information. So tokenization involves substituting sensitive data I'll write it down with non sensitive token to reduce the risk associated with the storing and transmission of sensitive information. So, when you see your social security number, some numbers that's so long, you, they can change some of this number and mix it with something else. When you see it, you think it, if you want to use it, you can use it because it's not the real number. They have changed it to something else. So, they tokenize it. You are seeing the number, but it's not the original number. So that tokenization, you're replacing this data with non-sensitive data. Okay, guys, I hope you get it. I hope you get it, get it, get it, guys. <laughs> is it, are you having fun? Are you enjoying this? If it's fun to you, because the main goal is to make it fun while you are learning. If it's fun to you, put the put the word fun in the, in the chat for me. Put the word fun here. Comment fun. It's fun for me. I need to see that phone, the text phone. So make sure that it's not boring. Tech doesn't have to be boring. It had a tendency to be boring, boring, but you can make all the money in this world from it. So therefore, it has to be fun while we make the money. Why not? So Mark said it's fun. Rita said it's fun. Eddie said it's fun. Fatima said it's fun. Fast Adegbite said it's fun. Everybody said it's fun. And they say, I'm loving it, fun, and adding to my knowledge. Beautiful. That's the goal. Don't have to make it so boring and so, yeah. Like, no, I don't do that around here. You have to be fun. Because we, we spend a lot of time on it, so we have to enjoy it while we're making the money, isn't it? That's the plan. So that's when you learn so much with me and you don't even know you're learning anything. Like, it's not like painful. It's just fun and you're still learning. So that's the goal. Now, question eight. What does PCI DSS require for remote access to card order data? What does PCI DSS require for remote access to card order data? A, multi-factor authentication. B, single-factor authentication. <laughs> C, no authentication is required. And D, only biometric authentication. Put your answer in the chat. I see first Adegite said, huh, this one, it has to be A. Carl said it's A. Mumoni said it's A. Mark A. Ah, this one, everybody say A. Hmm. <laughs> Tesha said it's A. Fatima said it's A. Wow. Everybody said it's A. How can that be? Rita said it's A. Wow. A is really in trouble with us we need to make sure it's a it has to be that a what is motor facts authentication even linkedin user said a mm. we have to find out okay you are got it. even prince one said a wow how beautiful is that right <laughs> motor fact authentication a it is you got it you got it right so pci dss mandate the use of motor fact authentication for remote access to cut all that data. Okay. So multiple factor. Can you give me an example of multiple factor? Multi-factor. You, you know when you want to log in, you have your username and password. That's one factor. Then when you have more, what are the examples of more that you can add to username and password? Then another factor can be what? Talk to me. 
What's the other factor you can add on? In addition to your username and password, what other factor can you add on to authenticate? And what is authentication? Okay, fingerprint, yes. Which is, fingerprint is what? Biometrics, right? Google authentication, yes. Which they send you a number on Google or your SMS, um, you know. It can be a card. You put your card in, like smart card and pin. Microsoft Authenticator, Biometrics, beautiful. So all these are multi-factor, so that as you authenticate, so normally, if you put your password, you put your username, yes, very good code on your text, very good card reader, code to your phone, beautiful. If you put your username on, on there, that's your identification, right? And you put your password in, yeah, then you are authenticated. And then when you're authenticated, you are now able to assess whatever you're authorized and privileged to assess. We can use your resources and we can do, we can now be able to do your audit. So it's high triple A, right? Identification, authentication, authorization, and 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 then and then we can do your audits. I triple A, remember that. This is the steps involved in this identity and access management. Okay, it's I triple A. Okay, those are extras for you. Very good. Question nine. If you have not done Security Plus, make sure you come to our Security Plus. It's so fun. We go deep, deep, deep down. If you finish your Security Plus, you'll be so good. Okay, biometric N N Y black on it. Very good. Welcome. Thank you. Biometric authentication. Um. Okay, so question nine. Which of the following is considered a strong control for limiting physical access to card order data? Strong control for limiting physical access to card order data. Physical access, right? Surveillance cameras, B, biometric authentication, C, visitors log, and this security guard. We're talking about physical access, physical control. Okay, so what is it? Which of the following is considered a strong control? Some of them might be controlled, but we will not be strong enough. When you have a camera in the building, is it what's that going to do to to uh, limiting access to card or that data? With camera limit their access, with biometric authentication going to limit their access. Is visitors' logs going to limit their access? When they have security guard in duty, will that limit their access? Okay, so you get it. So we are saying, you are now saying, uh, anywhere black on the said B, everybody saying B, and then LinkedIn user said A. Okay, so let's see. So it's B. So bar biometric authentication is a strong control. For limiting physical access as it involves unique biological characteristics for identity verification. So when some of you are trying to get into the building physically, and then they have to put in their pin at the door, or they have to put in their finger and uh, thumb print to get in, or they have to look at their eyeball or they have to speak so that their voice, things like that. So that's biometrics. Or it can have to be when they sign, they see their signature, it can be anything. Or how they get, how they walk, it can be anything. So all these things are biometric authentication. It's very strong and it might, it's gonna be costly. And among some of you have seen that, you know, before, but most of the time, the most common ones are maybe you have to do your fingerprint, or you have to uh, maybe, you know, you know, maybe put a pin or something like that. But there's so many you can do. Okay. Question 10. What is the purpose of penetration testing in the context of PCI DSS? Why do you do pen testing? A, to test the strength of physical barriers. B, to assess the effectiveness of security controls. 
C, to evaluate the usability of the payment application and D, to determine network bandwidth. Why do we do uh, pen testing? Give me your answer in the chat. <laughs> Okay, I'm seeing a lot of B to assess the effectiveness of security control. Okay, I see a lot of Bs. Okay, I see all Bs. Very good, guys. So it's B, right? So assess the effectiveness of security controls. Penetration testing help evaluate the effectiveness of security control and identify vulnerability that could be exploited by attackers very good that's excellent isn't it that's excellent isn't it guys so thank you so much for being here today also tell me how much did you score put your answer in the chat score yourself how many did you get wrong right how many people got all the 10 questions right if you get the quest 10 questions right put 10 in the chat <laughs> Let's see. If you get the other, if you get ten questions right, put it. If you get nine questions right, put it. If you get eight questions right, put it. If you get seven questions right, put it. Let's see who is the winner. Rita says seven. You tried, Rita. And be true, be true. Don't, don't be sure because I know some people got it wrong, so I know. <laughs> okay. Fatima got eight. Tessa got eight. Mumuni got eight. Very good. A lot of eights. Uh, Max got nine to five. That's good. That's good. You, that's a pass, Mark. <laughs> but at least you were able to get, at least learn something. So next time for, we have to redo this particular test now and prep together. You will get more, right? Because you've learned. What are the new things you learned today? Anything new that you learned today, put it in the chat. Let me see. What is the new thing you saw? Well, at least one new thing that you learned today. Let's see. Let me see. One new thing you learned today. I'm expecting. One new thing you learned today. TLS. Excellent. Tisha says TLS. Beautiful. I'm glad you learned that. Very good. Moon Moon is at password length. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, Max ATL SSL versus CLS. Beautiful. <laughs> Rita said, when is the next class after February? After this February, we have the next class starting in March. March, the first week of March is the next class. March night, night of March. It's a Saturday class. Okay, 10 to 12, and then 2 to 4. So reach out to me. Um, we already have the match class in, in already actually getting ready. So just reach out to me, schedule a call, my at university.com. I'll call you, I'll talk to you, and I'll put you ready for the class. So 12 is the new PCI. Good, excellent. Uh, password length. Okay, good. TLS tokenization. Excellent, everybody. Thank you so much, guys, for being here today. I'm so grateful that you're able to join us. I uh, will be meeting again. Um, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you come and learn with us, okay? Don't procrastinate to break into tech, okay? Tell your friends and loved ones to do it. It's the way to go. Tech it is. People are breaking in. People are making me 200K to 200K for real. You can also do that. We're going to help you, mentor you, coach you, and guide you to break in. And also, you'll be part of the family, okay? You'll be part of the family here, okay? You're not going to be discriminated against. We are all one, and we guide you and help you. I'm committed to helping you to break into tech. So reach out, reach out. It feels like family here. It's imagine where you can be and you know that somebody got your back. That's what we do. Not the one that they finish training you and you can't even talk to anybody. We don't do that around here. Hmm? Okay, somebody said, I've got my brother to register. I will be next. Yes. Okay, I think I saw your brother. Yes, Rita. Yes, your brother should be in, the, in this class or something. Yeah. Yeah, Rita, you are doing well. Good job. Thank you for that. So get yourself registered and get your loved one registered, okay? 
Thank you. I love you so much. And I'll see you next week. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.